Hey everyone, Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb, and with me is Paul Dye of Kit Planes. He's the uh, editor at large there, and this is not a clickbait title. We're really going to tell you how to convert an electric motorcycle into an airplane in 501 easy steps. So, Paul, you started this project a, a number of months ago. You had a um, Zeno's motor glider kit that you'd bought a while ago, and then you you got inspired to, to do this electric conversion using uh, the, uh, a donor motorcycle, the, the Zero motorcycle. So what got you started? Tell us about it. Well, you know, we're both in the in the journalism business, aviation journalism, so you know what it's like. I was off doing a story on a fellow in California, Gabe DeVault, who who is an electric motorcycle and electric propulsion system expert. And he had decided to to build a motor glider with an electric motor. And so he bought um, somebody else's Xenos kit and he converted it. So I got invited to go over, fly it, uh, evaluate it, and write it up for the magazine. When I got done, I said, you know, I've got the exact same uh, airframe sitting at home that we're just, just kind of stalled on. We've been working on other projects. And I thought, what an interesting, challenging thing to do. Uh, I've, I've been in the aerospace business all my life, but I haven't been doing much cutting edge recently. So I thought, oh, this, is, this should be fun. Um, and uh, and it, it turned out to be a, a pretty interesting project. I learned a lot, which is the whole purpose of experimental aviation is education and recreation. And um, it flies about the same as I remember the Xenos, the factory Xenos that I flew with uh, with the Aero V engine. So it's a it's a very good match. How about the uh, motorcycle uh, uh, acquiring it, disassembling it and and uh, adapting the uh the, the power system. Yeah. So the first thing you have to recognize is that zero motorcycle doesn't want to have anything to do with aviation. So you can't uh, call them up and say you want to buy a motor and a controller and a battery or anything. You have to just go to a dealer and buy a motorcycle. Um, I, I bought one that was very slightly used uh, about from a dealer over in California. It had about 1800 miles on it. The guy had returned it for a different model. And, um, then uh, I did ride the bike around for a couple months just to see what it was like to ride an electric motorcycle and uh, realize just how, how much the acceleration that thing had in sport mode. You could it just about rip your arms out of the uh, out of their sockets if you just hit it hard. Um, anyways, you, it took us about a about a full day to tear the bike apart. Um, uh, you know, you take off all the plastic trim and, and then start pulling out components um, and uh, the the toughest part is that to get the motor out, you've got to take the whole rear swing arm off. And now you've got this motor, this heavy motorcycle with a 180 pound battery hanging from a, an engine hook so you can maneuver things around. And at the end, the, the, the battery pack actually lifts out of the bike or, or that you lift the bike off of the battery pack because the battery pack comes off the bottom. Um, so you you put a motorcycle jack underneath the battery pack, and then you use a hoist to lift the bike off the top of it. Um, pulling the entire harness, the electrical harness out, um, uh, was part of that day of stripping the bike. And then it then we laid that whole harness out on the uh, on the workbench, and we took out anything that we didn't need for uh, for the airplane, which meant turn signals. Um, uh, lights, all that a horn, all that stuff. So basically we took the entire 12 volt system off, except for the DC to DC converter that takes the 100 and 120 volt battery voltage down to 12 volts so that we could power some avionics. Um, and, and we had this fantasy that, you know, if it didn't work out, we could put the bike back together, but that, that would, that would be impossible. <laughs> there's, there's no way you're ever going to do that. So if you've got that dream, don't, don't plan on that. Um, and and there's this unknown, you know, that if we ever do need a major component uh, and we go to zero, they're just going to tell us to go away. Uh, that we're not going to be able to get a battery or a, or a motor or anything out of them. Um, and then converting it over to the airplane was really a question of um, uh, Gabe DeVault builds a mount for the motor uh, that mounts the motor and gives you a reduction drive, a belt reduction drive to a prop uh, hub. And that you can mount on the front of any motor mount that you want to build for any airplane you want to build. Uh, the motor mount, in our case, is kind of a misnomer. It's really a battery mount because we had Sonex, who was very interested in this project and is supporting it for future people. Uh, they designed a, a mount 
that put Gabe's prop hub at the same spot as the original motor mount, and it provided a place to mount the battery. So the battery's forward of the firewall, um, and it uh, hanging behind the motor. So you, you you do all that mechanical integration, which really didn't take very long, a uh, couple days, which is pretty short in the experimental airplane world. And then it was just a question of finding places to put the electrical components, uh, building some bracketry and, and the like. So uh, probably the most difficult or most time consuming uh, thing uh, was simply building uh, or uh, uh, finishing the cowling, which is a stock Sonics cowl, but I just had to make a few mods to make it fit right. So, um, uh, and then the, the last thing you have to do <laughs> is bring Gabe, the, the creator of this power package over with his magical programming box, because he's the, he's the only one who has one out of captivity of the zero dealer network that he plugs it in and you have to tell it to, to turn in, it's going to turn in the operate, uh, uh, opposite direction and uh, using a different throttle because we had to put a different kind of throttle on it. And then, um, and that uh, ignore the kickstand switch uh, because the bike won't go forward if you if the kickstand's not up and then ignore the tip over switch because it's, it's got a tip over switch built into the computer and the computer's not oriented the same way it is in the bike. So you do have a few little software programming things. Um, and Gabe did that for us, it took him an hour and, uh, and we had a, an airplane motor. How about uh, weight and balance and center of gravity? Because you got that 180 pound uh, battery pack. Right. So it worked out uh, almost perfect. Um, we knew it was going to work because Gabe's uh, Xenos is flying and I flew it and it and it worked just fine. So I didn't do a lot of calculations up front because I just knew we were duplicating an existing configuration. Um, and as it turned out, the uh, the the airplane was set up for a originally for an Aero V, which is a VW conversion produced by Sonics, and 18 gallons of fuel, which is between the firewall and the instrument panel, um, and replacing all that with the uh, the zero package, um, we ended up with our CG right dead smack in the middle of the range. It's perfect. And and what about overall weight versus the Aero V? Yeah, so. Uh, the, the the battery packs 180 pounds the motor i guess is about uh, 30 35 maybe 40 pounds uh props a wash it's the exact same props prop we bought beforehand um and and so uh the airplane came out weight and balance wise very similar probably within 10 or 20 pounds of the of the uh the, the standard xenos and uh, did you have to make any other airframe mods? It sounds like it's, no, it sounds like it's pretty self-contained. It, it, it is very self-contained. Um, we, uh, we took out the fuel tank, which is, like I said, between the firewall and the, and the uh, <clears throat> instrument panel. And, and we built a bracket for what's called the charge tank. So Zero makes a fast charger. The bike comes standard with a 12, uh, 120 volt charger. Uh, that mounts underneath the battery and it takes overnight to charge the bike but they sell this it's called a charge tank and it it's a, it's like a big lead ass lead acid battery in terms of weight that goes inside the fake fuel tank on the motorcycle um and uh that we mounted that where the fuel tank was in the in the glider so we had to build a little bracketry for that um but Essentially, there just was no were no other real airframe mods. The wings, the tail, the fuselage are all the same. How about the peak power and torque out of that motor? Yeah, so um, it's maximum uh, maximum power is fifty five kilowatts, seventy some horsepower. Uh, maximum continuous is about twenty eight kilowatts, uh, which is around forty thirty eight horsepower, something like that. Um, and uh, minimum level flight cruise is about 10 kilowatts. Um, and, and I've only flown it about two hours so far, so we don't have a lot of numbers. Most of these numbers are coming from Gabe, and it seems to match within about 10% of Gabe's numbers. So, so we're getting pretty good performance. And, and, and I'm, I'm happy with 10% match because we're at uh, 4,500 feet above sea level here, and he's down at sea level near uh, Monterey. Now that uh, because the Xenos is a, a motor glider, you've got a, a pretty good match for duty cycle here. It sounds like it's perfect. Um, you know, I, I am not a an electric airplane evangelist, 
but I am an engineer who realizes that electric airplanes are coming, and I think it's a neat thing to do. But I'm like like most people, I'm a skeptic. Um, and so the energy density of batteries is not where the energy density of gasoline is or avgas. <laughs> Um, but with the motor glider, since we're only flying, uh, let me give you some numbers. Gabe has flown two hour flights with his, uh, and a combination of soaring and level flight. Um, I have been flying the, the five flights I've done so far. Um, I've landed after 35 minutes with about 40% of the battery power remaining. And I, and I'll be honest, I've been flying it as I say, like an airplane, not like a glider. Um, I have shut it down in flight and shut it down. That just means you pull the throttle all the way to the back and, mm -hmm. it, and, it, and it shuts off um, just to come down um, and to do a little bit of uh, glide testing. But um, I would say that you could fly it like an airplane for 45 minutes uh, in the traffic pattern and, and the like. It takes about 10% of the battery power to climb a thousand feet. So rule of thumb. So that tells you that, you know, you could fly, climb about 10,000 feet and then you'd be empty. Mm -hmm. And have you, um, we, well, you're only two hours into it, so you probably haven't used it as a motor glider or shut it down and then find some lift somewhere. Right. Um, I've, I've been staying close, close to our airport so far. And um, even though we're about uh, 10 miles from Minden, which is kind of the soaring capital of the, of the country of the West, um, our particular valley is kind of known as a dead valley. The wind comes through and blows the thermals out. So uh, I, I don't have a convenient house thermal right next to the airport that, or that one that we found yet. What do you think is the practicality of this uh, as, as far as converting, uh, converting the motorcycle or establishing a market that would basically use that uh, battery pack and uh, motor? I think when you consider that it, that, that this power system was optimized for a motorcycle and not for an airplane, that there are efficiencies that could be gained uh, simply by saying, hey, let's, let's build a dedicated airplane power plant. Um, I was running some numbers and I mean, uh, I grew up flying J3 Cubs with a, with a 65 horse motor like you've got. And um, I ran some numbers and realized that this power package would give you essentially the same performance for the same weight uh, as the uh, as the Continental and the fuel. And you could probably fly it in the traffic pattern for 45 minutes to an hour. And 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 that's an amazing number when you think about it, because um, a few years back, Sonex took one of their short wing, short wing Sonexes and built an electric airplane out of it. And and that was 15 years ago and they got it to go around the pattern like once uh in terms of endurance but if you uh, i don't know how you fly your cub uh, paul but but when i had a cub um 45 minutes was about as long as i flew it and i usually went up and i just did touch and goes yeah and, uh, that's pretty much all you can do with a cub and unless you've really got an iron ass and you want to go somewhere but, and you uh, want to go somewhere yeah uh, because when you said uh we were corresponding on something else and you said oh by the way if i run the numbers on this you if you had some power plant like this in your cub you might be able to get 45 minutes out and i thought well bingo that that's right in the range of how it's, these it's uh, practical records are used it's yeah. practical right that's just what you want to do for with it um now there are other considerations so uh it takes about two hours to charge it <clears throat> So let's say you're a flight school going, wow, this is perfect. I really want to have one of these things for my flight line. Well, you're only going to fly it one lesson, and then it has to sit for two hours before you fly another lesson. So that's something to think about right now. Um, I just, just before we got on, I got an invitation from the Electric Glider Association to, to attend with my Ezenos in Tehachapi uh, next in, on Labor Day. And Tehachapi is down near, uh, down near in the Antelope Valley, down near Mojave, which, you know, is that's a flight that I can make in my RV in about an hour and 50 minutes and be there. It's totally impractical to take the Ezenos there because I can't find a place to land every 60 miles that has 220 uh, volt power that I can plug in and charge it. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not an airplane that you could take the wings off very easily. Yeah. How about um, 
in terms of longevity, well, the motor is probably forever, but battery health isn't. So how do you, what's your outlook on that as far as monitor, monitoring it uh, d during uh, flight and, and, and as the aircraft ages and replacing it? I think that's one <clears throat> of the, uh, one of the points you have to recognize about being a pioneer. Um, we don't know. The battery has a big sticker on the side of it, a big yellow consumer sticker that says five-year warranty. So Zero is comfortable giving it a full five-year warranty, non-prorated, uh, to uh, on a motorcycle that's going to be operated in all sorts of conditions and probably undercharged and overcharged and the like. So um, we'll we'll find out and. Uh, at some point, I'm sure that it's going to start losing capacity, but we're doing everything we can uh, by the rules of uh, lithium cobalt batteries. You don't you don't want to leave it at 100 percent. You don't want to leave it below 20 percent. Um, you know, you charge it and then you cool, let, let it let it uh, 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 kind of cool off before you fly it. We did a, a stress test before we flew it for the first time. We charged it up fully. Then we tied it down, sat in the cockpit, and ran it um, at, at motor temperature limits until it was down to, I think, 15%. Uh, <laughs> then we plugged it in and charged it, and we did that same stress test again. And we plugged it in, and the battery said, I'm a little warm. I'm going to wait for a while before I take a charge. So we had to let it cool down for an hour before it would start yeah. charging the, that <clears> next time. But you know, that that's kind of extreme use. Uh, as I sometimes joke, and with apologies to all my friends at Sonics, two hours is about as long as you want to sit in a Sonics cockpit anyways. Yeah. Yeah, or any small cockpit for that matter. I mean, yeah. they're not exactly yeah. the most comfortable things in the world. Right. Um, so, so, so I was looking around at some specs, and it, uh, a uh, Tesla M Model 3 has 450 horsepower max. So if you, could, <laughs> if you could figure out the numbers, you know, put it into a scale Mustang. It might yeah. only fly for 10 minutes, but you'd have 10,000 foot climb. So yes. who cares how long you fly? Who cares? <laughs> and you would have one heck of a neat Mustang, right? Wouldn't you? Um, you know, there, there are several f fascinating things that I'm discovering. I kind of feel like a young engineer again. Um, uh, I don't know if you've seen our video of the first takeoff. It sounds like a regular recip uh propeller airplane taken off which tells you that uh all the when you see a no, uh, a propeller airplane go by uh, all the noise is propeller noise mm -hmm. um it's very little exhaust noise uh exhaust note the exhaust note's just a little bit different with this you know just enough for you to go what well, what was that but um but it's still mostly propeller noise yeah i noticed that in flying the pipistrels which i've done several times uh on the inside well, you might as well be in a piston airplane. It, it yes. sounds no different than a piston airplane unless you list, listen carefully. There's no that overpressure exhaust note. That isn't there. But you do get the pulsing from the propeller slipstream hitting the windshield, and, it, and it's pretty noisy, actually. And on the yeah. ground, and, and I commented on the video, uh, the run-up sounds, um, it sounds different, but it's not like it's whisper quiet. No, no. And I don't, I don't think um, people have this misimpression of, of electric airplanes that they're gliding silently through the air. They aren't. No, they're not. They're not. This thing on, on my first <laughs> flight, um, I've done an awful lot of first flights of experimental aircraft. And it, it, if, if people say, well, what kind of things go wrong? And I say, if I had to pin one thing that goes wrong, it's <clears> calm. Either the radio doesn't work or the intercom doesn't work or the, the helmet, my helmet doesn't work with the headset or something. And on this one, it was no different. The The little comm radio that we had in there has a built-in <laughs> intercom. And when I went full power and started rolling down the window, the squelch on the intercom broke. And I did the whole first flight with just this horrendous noise from the cockpit in my helmet the whole time. Um, and so it just doesn't, doesn't, uh, it's just not much quieter. Yeah. So we're, um, as far as flyability, um, no different than the gasoline model? It's really no different. Um, when you throttle all the way back, which, <clears> you know, it's like rolling up to a stop sign on your motorcycle um, and releasing the throttle, it just, it stops. It's, the, the motor's not running. But because there's no compression, the, the, the prop windmills 
So the prop keeps windmilling against that no compression. There's just no, you, on the ground, you can walk up to it and you can spin it around with your little finger. It's kind of like a turbine, uh, you know, a free, yeah. a free turbine. And so you're not really creating that much drag on the airframe when it does it, but it, but it's a little strange. The really strange part <laughs> When you taxi out and you taxi up to the hold short line and you pull the throttle all the way back to quote unquote idle, the prop stops and your, your pilot's lizard brain immediately says, oh, I just stalled the engine, you know, because the prop stopped and, yeah. and now I'm blocking all the rest of the traffic that's trying to get to the runway. Well, no, that's just what electric airplanes do when, when you pull yeah. it back to nothing, it's, it's off. Yeah. Yeah. And then in flight, when you pull it back to nothing, um, it just gets a little quiet. It just gets quieter. Um, it's not like when you shut off your your uh, your piston engine and the, if you slow it down enough, you can get the prop to stop and then it gets really quiet. But this thing still has some noise. You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, were you worried about and did you mitigate in any way fire risk? Yeah, so... Um, uh, First off, I kind of believe in the faith. I have a little bit of faith in the the fact that no zero motorcycle has burned up yet out on the highway. So they've done a pretty good job of that. Um, and then my standard answer for this is, well, the stock Xenos has, as I mentioned, 18 gallons of fuel behind the firewall in front of the panel. So over your over your knees, right where it is for the front seat passenger on a Cub, right, on a J3. Um, this puts the battery, the source of all that energy, in front of the firewall. So would you rather have 18 gallons of gas in your lap or would you rather have um, a battery, the, 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 that same equivalent energy in front of the firewall? And um, I know where I, I prefer it. So I'm really not worried about, about, about fire. It just doesn't, hasn't, hasn't registered as a significant con concern. Yeah, um, the concern in batteries, of course, is that uh, for various reasons they spontaneously combust. Uh, and yeah, in usually, electric... yeah, usually that's happened when they're charging, but you know. Well, yeah, but in some cases not. Uh, you know, when they've been uh, some of the Tesla crashes, when they've yep. been uh, compromised, uh, they catch yep. fire, and, yep. and and other times just because it's a defective battery. And of course, yeah. once they and... get going, you got to get on the ground. That's right. And, and uh, the, the, this is a lithium cobalt. It's not a lithium polymer. Like, you know, folks that fly model airplanes always worry about their lithium, lithium polymer batteries going. Um, I, the, the, the odds of this just suddenly deciding to uh, combust and, and you got to remember, it's got a computer that's monitoring battery temp, controller temp and motor temp. And if any of those go over limits and they're very conservative limits for the hardware, it's going to start reducing power on you. So it's protecting itself and by doing that, protecting you. I won't say it can't happen, but I think that the odds are are small enough that if you did a nose first crash into the desert um, and you compromise the battery, sure, you could have some energy release and a lot of smoke and fire. But then in that same condition with the gas yeah. airplane, you'd have be the worse. gasoline going off. Yeah, it'd be worse. Right. So. Um, if you're dead, you're dead. Uh, worse doesn't really make much difference. But um, the one thing that we do that I'm going to do once we get through the, the initial test phase is I will um, fly it to the limits, the temperature limits, and see how it reduces power. Because uh, that's what the motorcycle does is when it gets too hot, it starts, you know, making it making it underpowered for you. And that's what this will do, too. Yeah. Um, so what, what coverage uh, has, uh, you, you've done some video and you've done some articles on this. Where are yeah, you with that? Yeah, we've got a pretty long series of articles in the magazine <clears throat> on uh, building in the electric Xenos in Kit Plains magazine. And we've, well, I think we've done about five or six or seven, and we've got about four or five yet to go, uh, that'll get through the process. We've got a little video coverage, um, on the, uh, on Kit Plains, uh, and some, uh, blogs. Um, so you'll see more more effort. The one thing you probably won't see is this appearing at AirVenture or any of the other big shows simply because getting it cross country is problematic. Um, the EAA, my friends at EAA asked if I could possibly get it to AirVenture this year. And I said, well, sure, if you send a semi truck. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah that would you, you, you'd have to start in May. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be I mean, a long trip. There, There is a fellow who's trying to organize an electric <laughs> airplane race from St. Louis to uh, Kitty Hawk. And uh, I, I don't think he's quite realized that it's probably going to take <laughs> as long as the Vin Fizz took to go cross country <laughs> the very first time, you know, was that three months or something? And because the charge times, this is a, the, the range on this is about 60 miles and the charge times are a couple hours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Paul Dye, thanks very much for this. It's interesting. Uh, we'll follow up on it. I'll, I'll, I'll put in some links to the coverage. I think it's something that uh, a lot of people are, are interested in, and I certainly am. Yep. We'll get we'll get we'll get one of these things on your cub one of these days. I think I think All you'd right. enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Paul. You bet.